making breakaway glass bottles using smash plastic urethane resin. Now, the smash plastic is a product that is specifically developed for the movie industry and the prop industry. It's a product that is made to break up on impact and look like real glass while it's absolutely safe to handle. Here you can see the detail of the material as it shatters and it's of course fully safe to be broken up on your uh, actors, friends and non-moving objects. Now here you can see a reproduction on the right that we did of a glass bottle and you can see that it looks absolutely stunning. So a realistic uh, life-like objects are possible with these materials. Now to start our project we uh, need a mold and for this we're going to use this cardboard tube and a glass bottle that we're going to reproduce. I'm going to simply mark the cardboard tube about an inch above the model and I'm going to cut that down to size and I'm going to proceed by sealing the cardboard. I'm going to use some sonite wax here. I'm simply going to brush that onto the inside of the cardboard tube and let that dry for about 20 minutes. Keep in mind that silicone will stick to porous material, so uh, it's important to seal that cardboard. Now moving on to the model, we're going to glue our glass bottle upside down to a working surface and you notice I'm using a paper towel so I don't leave any fingerprints on that glass surface. And now I'm going to put some release agent on that glass but not before I actually cover the working surface because we do want to adhere that cardboard tube to that working surface. While silicones do not stick to many things, they could potentially stick to silica based items and that is what glass is. Glass does contain silica and to be proactive we're going to put some release agent on our model. This is East Release 200. We're going to do a spray brush spray technique here. We're going to simply spray some release agent, use a dry brush, brush it around, spread it and then spray it one more time. The release agent is allowed five minutes to dry before pouring silicone over it. And then we're going to adhere the cardboard tube to our working surface. Now here I'm going to put a cut mark for later on so I know where to cut the actual support shell open. Now as far as our molding rubber, we're going to be using the Moldstar 15 Slow. And the main reason for that is because the smash plastic casting resin that we're using calls for it. So if you take a look at the technical bulletin, there's going to be a section that says uh, selecting a mold rubber and if you take a look at that specifically it calls for mold star one of the mold star series and that's why we go in with this particular material besides that the mold star has a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume so no gram scale is necessary and it has a 50 minute work time with a four hour cure As always, you want to make sure you premix your materials, premix your part A and part B separately, and then we're going to dispense it into a mixing container. And like I said, since I know the volume of the mold that I'm working with, I'm simply going to dispense the entire trial kit, and I'm going to stir that thoroughly, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, and then we're going to transfer it into a secondary clean mixing container. This is a double mix technique. So we're going to mix it in a first container, transfer it to a second container, mix it one more time, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, and then we're ready to pour the material. Now, as always, whenever you do block molds and pour on molds, pour from high up. Let the material hit in one spot and seek its own way up. This is going to prevent any kind of air bubbles on the surface of your model. The silicone is now allowed a full cure for four hours. All right, that's been uh, four hours now. Our silicone has fully cured. I'm going to start by demolding our model. I'm going to remove the cardboard tube, our support shell, and we're going to put this aside because we're going to need it later on. And then we're going to cut that mold open using a mold knife. I'm simply going to cut this in a S, S curve. Um, this is going to allow the uh, two sides to come together much better later on. Now, if you want to know how to I, uh, made these mold knives, you can check out another video of mine on how to create these. These are easy to create with your regular 
uh, razor blades. And then we're going to simply pull our original model out and proceed to preheat the mold. As you can see, the detail of our model transferred into the mold perfectly, and we're going to have very good looking castings coming out of this mold. Now again, the Smash Plastic uh, Breakaway product, this is designed to be a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, so it's very easy to use. It does have a five minute work time and a 90 minute demold or cure time. Now, if we take a look at the Smash Plastic Technical Bulletin, you will see that it states the pot life or work time of the material is about five minutes and that is at regular room temperature of about 73 Fahrenheit. Now, if we take a look at the rotational casting section in our TB, you're gonna notice that the working time is about seven to 10 minutes, and that's because you're spreading the material in a thin section, and the exotherm, the heat generated by the material that helps to promote the cure, is not there because it's a very thin application. So to shorten that seven to 10 minutes working time, we're gonna preheat our mold in an oven to about 200 Fahrenheit, and that's gonna bring the working time down to about two and a half minutes. Now, before you even ask me how much resin you need in a casting like this, I'm gonna tell you, you need to do a test casting to figure out how much resin it takes for you to cast this particular project in about eighth of an inch thickness. Keep in mind that the full brittleness of the material is achieved after 24 hours and your castings shouldn't be thicker than an eighth of an inch. Now the Smash Plastic is considered an industrial product and we have to make sure that we use the proper respirator here. So make sure that you have your equipment ready. And then we're gonna proceed to mixing some material and we're gonna need some colorant here. We're gonna be using the So Strong colorant to get a translucent glass-like color. And I'm simply going to start by dispensing my part B and then we're going to add a small amount of the So Strong pigments. Notice here that I'm uh, dispensing the pigments onto a palette knife or uh, separately. I'm not dispensing them directly into the resin because we don't want to overpower the resin with the pigment. Now, very small quantities of the three pigments is added uh, basically with a toothpick and then mixed in to see what it's going to look like in the final casting. So we're adding a little bit of blue a little bit of the green and a little bit of the brown to achieve that uh, glass-like uh, color that the original bottle had. Uh, once I have that mixed in, I'm gonna compare it to the original model. If the resin appears a bit too dark here, that's because we haven't added the part A to it yet. The smash plastic that had the pot life of about five minutes is now gonna have a work time of about two and a half minutes which is perfect when you have to rotocast material. The support shell that we had from earlier, the cardboard one, is put around the mold using some tape and then we're ready for the casting process. Now the part A is dispensed equal amount and the two components are combined together in a clean mixing container and mixed thoroughly. Again, you always want to make sure to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of your mixing container. And then we're going to proceed to vacuum degas the material. If you're not sure what vacuum degassing is, click on the link above to see how to vacuum degas materials. And then we're going to rotationally cast this piece. So we're going to pour the material in. The mold should be rotating until the material pot life or work time has fully expired and the material inside of our mold is no longer moving. This is easy to keep track if you just keep looking inside your mold, as you can see me doing here in the video. The pot life of smash plastic is usually five minutes, but since we preheated this mold, the pot life went down to about two and a half minutes. This is gonna vary depending on how hot the mold is. The material is now allowed a full cure of 90 minutes before demolding. 
Here is uh, some uh, excess material I had left over, left in my uh, mixing container, and it has fully cured. It's about 90 minutes later, so that is good to be demolded. And we can now go to our casting. We're going to remove that support shell. And then I'm going to slowly prop that uh, mold open. Uh, this is really important to be careful here because these castings are fragile. You can easily break them. So here I'm going to borrow a set of hands of one of my coworkers and have him actually remove the casting out of that mold. So now here we can see the original model on the left with the reproduction casting on the right. You can see that the casting is quite dull, uh, but that's not a problem. I'm going to show you here a little tip. Spraying the smash plastic with denatured alcohol or isopropyl will melt the outer layer just enough to give the final casting a very glossy finish, which makes it look very realistic. Now, it is very important to read and understand the technical bulletin and letting the material itself reach its full brittleness by allowing it to fully cure for 24 hours to make sure that you never hurt anyone. Now here we have the final casting and uh, my coworker's head and we're just checking out and see how this works. Uh, the smash plastic looks absolutely fantastic, looks uh, real and uh, does just what it's designed for. Now if you got inspired and you would like to give your own projects a go and need some of our materials, you can visit any one of our distributors around the world. A simple and easy way to make your very own smash plastic props using the Mold Star 15 for your mold and the smash plastic for the actual castings. Now if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the thumbs up button. Now to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.